Good morning, LBC Radio. My name is Corey Rosen with the Story Podcast. Today I have on a guest, Leslie Talley. Leslie is an actor with over 15 years of professional theater and on-screen experience. She started, she starred, sorry, in Sight and Sound Theaters productions, reprising leading roles for seven years, as well as starring in many local theaters. She worked steadily on screen, shooting commercials, feature films, short films, print, and voiceover. Leslie is a Pennsylvania native who studied music and social work at Millersville, Univers- Millersville University. She also teaches, specializing in on-screen audition prep, commercials, TV, and filming, film acting. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing great. Good. How are you? I'm, you know what? I'm a little frazzled, but it's okay. You're doing great. Thank you. So, what started... When you were a kid, what was it that drew you to theater? Was it your parents? Was it this album? Was this, was it a show that you saw? That's a great question. I remember being, so my, my parents took me and my sisters to New York City for the first time. We mm-hmm. saw Les Mis on Broadway. And I knew nothing about it. I didn't have much interest in musical theater at the time. I think before we had gone, I think I had realized that I enjoyed singing, Mm. but I didn't know that children could do this. Right. (laughs) Okay. So it was just like, okay, that's what I could do when I'm a grown up. But, um, so we saw Les Mis and then, um, young Cosette came out on the stage and sang castle in the cloud. And I remember leaning over to my mom and saying, kids can do this <laughs> how cool and so i learned the song and then that led me to annie and i was obsessed with annie um i was probably like 11 so that was like perfect timing mm-hmm. <laughs> um i remember sitting in my bedroom just listening to the annie soundtrack on my cd yeah does everyone know what a cd is <laughs> um and i just remember listening over and over again belting it out in my bedroom Dude, the Annie soundtrack. I, I played Pit for Annie and Easy Street. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, does it just tickle every? I, I'm getting chills thinking about yeah. it. I love Annie. I know some people are like haters on Annie, but I. I it has been overplayed. Forever that, love Annie. It's so good. It's so good though. Yeah, it's so good. But I mean, even before I had gone to New York and got inspired um, with musical theater, I had always watched movies as a very young child and I was more captivated with the actors Mm. and the acting and what I was trying to learn from them than anything else that I was witnessing watching this movie, you know, the more than the storyline, more than the special effects. Um, It always came back to the acting. And I thought, I always thought this is, this is what I want to do. How can I do this? Mm. And were your parents very supportive of that? Yes. I remember always asking my mom if I could get an agent when I was a child. That never happened. And I think (laughs) she she did me well, you know, by not getting me an agent as a child. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I think my parents really encouraged me to just be a kid, you know, and enjoy my childhood. Do you have any thoughts behind that of uh, parents who push their children (laughs) to be an adult? Mm. Uh, before maybe they're ready or do you think that's bad for children or what do you have any thoughts on that I think like in anything when it comes to sports um, music playing an instrument or whatever it is I think the child has to have an interest you know mm. if there's no interest then why why are they doing it um, I would never push my own children to do something they don't want to do I will say though occasionally I will get booked for a job commercial TV film anything and sometimes the director or casting director will be like, um, you have a nine-year-old, right? <laughs> Can we use your nine-year-old? And I always ask my kids first. I'm like, mm-hmm. would you want to do this? This is what you'll be doing. This is how long it'll take. This is how much you'll get paid. And then when they hear that part, they're like, oh, I, get I, get to, paid. I get to use that money. And I'm like, yep, it's yep, up to you. So. But we always say, you have to put some of it in your college account. <laughs> um, but, but that's, I mean, I think the good thing about that is that they – get to learn professionalism. Mm -hmm. They get to interact with other adults that are working in a profession where they're being, you know, uh, kind to one another and collaborating and working and taking direction. And that's good for any child. Right. Um, But yeah, I would never, personally as a parent, I would never like have them be working like, you know, five days a week. Do you uh, fight for your children to get paid for your your work? Yeah. 
Absolutely. Because I know that that's like a that's like a common thing that children get way underpaid. Yeah, they do get underpaid. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know how I feel about that. Um, I mean, generally, actors um, sometimes do get underpaid, or you know, mm-hmm. sure, you know, production will ask that they'll say, you know, we need so and so for this this shoot. It's non paid, you know, and mm-hmm. I never want to take anything like that personally for myself, but. I always want my child to get paid. And if and if they don't, if I'm getting a, a good pay for a particular shoot, then just I'll just slide give them. Some money. Yeah, I'll just give them some of mine. Fair enough. So, um, growing up, did you when did did you did you uh, start auditioning for local school plays, local uh, theater plays? I auditioned for one community theater production, and I didn't get it. <laughs> But <laughs> it's fine. It was The Sound of Music. I think I was like nine, and we were going on our family vacation for their first week of rehearsal. And so when I was a child, I was like, well, that's why. That's why uh, they didn't so cast you, so you me. Had a, yeah. Um, you know, it, it was, of course, it was my first audition for musical theater, so it was probably atrocious. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, and then I never auditioned for anything again until high school. And so my first my first uh, stage production was high school. Uh, what was it? It was Cinderella, Cinderella, and I played the fairy godmother. That's a, that's a uh, well. I said it's a big role, but she's only like I don't know the the musical version. Mm-hmm. Is the fairy godmother a bigger role in that, or is it the same amount? It's as... probably about the same amount. Um, yeah. I mean, she she has like little vignettes dur- throughout the show. Um, and Does she my... have a solo song. Bibbidi bobbidi boo. No bibbidi bobbidi boo. No bibbidi A duet with Cinderella. A duet. Okay. And I think that might be it. I don't know. But my sister played Cinderella, and it was her oh, well, so that's, it that's was awesome. her senior year of high school. So it was really special for us. Yeah, we could hardly get through it without laughing. Because that's cool. We was were... was your sister also big in the theater? She was, and she was extremely talented. Yeah, she doesn't do anything with it anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah. Was there ever that feeling of being in your sister's shadow? No, I looked up. I'm the youngest of three girls, and I look. I still look up to my sisters so yeah. much. I mean, my oldest sister is still involved with theater. Um, my middle sister is not. Um, but but yeah, I always just my I just wanted to be like them, you know. Right. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Family healthy. Yeah. Uh, healthy family. That's healthy family. <laughs> yeah. Um. So when when did you, so you went to college? Did you uh, after high school? Did you think you wanted to go to college for that? Uh, that was what I really wanted to do. But then there was this voice in my head that was like, well, that's not realistic. That's not practical. You won't make any money. You need to do mm-hmm. something that's like going to provide for you. Um, so I had gotten a scholarship from University of the Arts in Philadelphia. And um, my goal was just to go into musical theater. And then um, I thought, well, what will I fall back on? Like, mm. I need to do like a real job. So then I decided to choose Millersville mm-hmm. and I started out as music education and I, that lasted for two weeks. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I realized I just like singing. I, mm. I appreciate music. I, I love listening to talented musicians. Um, but in terms of like wanting to dive deeper into the music world, I was like, I think I'm good where I am with just doing musical theater and I don't think that music education is something that I'm totally passionate about Mm. so then I switched to social work and I was still able to study music a little bit and and that was just perfect for me cool so uh did you do any productions through college I did um so I did a production my sophomore year my freshman year I did nothing I was just involved in choir and um probably smart and I mi- but I missed it so much. I felt like That's there fair. was like my soul was taken away from me. You know, like I was like, how can I, I need to get this out of me. Like I want to mm. act, I want to sing. Um, and so I did a production my sophomore year at Millersville. We, we did uh, Once on this Island. Okay. And um, when I was doing the show, I realized, why am I not doing this all the time? This is what I love. This is, this is giving me life. Um, and so I actually left school after my sophomore year. I talked to my parents, and they, they were in full support. And I Good. went out into the world having no experience, not even community theater. <laughs> I made nothing on my resume, and I just went for it, auditioning for everything I could. I went to New York several times a week, and I'm sure that casting directors looked at my resume and 
It's like, why? Laughed at right, yeah. <laughs> what they were seeing. Hmm, a high school production of Cinderella. Great. <laughs> One production that a se- yeah. s- senior year or yeah. sophomore year of college <laughs> and then left college. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but I, d- I did other productions in mm. high school. But still, that means nothing right, right. in the professional it means world. absolutely zero things. <laughs> yeah. Um, Especially if you don't know anybody. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so I was just a nobody, you know. And I, but I, I think th- my ignorance did me did me well because Mm. I think if I had known what I know now doing what I had done I would have been I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been so motivated you know Mm. I worked so hard and I wanted it so badly anyway and so I I got several callbacks and I but it was just the experience I didn't have experience I didn't have anything to my name um, and then one day I was, um, I was driving around Lancaster and I had my portfolio of my res- resume and my headshot with me in the car. And I thought, I think there's like a big theater around here. I, I mean, I've heard about people working there. I think, where is it? So I like tried to figure out where it was. I had never been there and I, I found it, I was sight and sound. Sight and sound, yep. And so I pulled up and, um, there, a security guard came out and he said, can I help you? And I said, yeah, I'm an actor. Can you just see that someone in casting gets my resume and hit my headshot? And he said, yeah, sure. <laughs> That's, that is, you know, I've had that exact same experience where I went to a place not knowing completely anything. I was like, hey, uh, is it possible I could talk to somebody? Yeah. And to a person that should not have ever been yeah. uh, in in any involvement of the person I was talking to. Yeah, yeah. But but it, 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 worked. it worked. It was a blessing yeah. because... Um, that night, I got an email from casting at Sight and Sound, and they said we're having an open call for our next season next week. Next and I was week. like, <sighs> "Like, <laughs> what is with this timing? It's so good." Um, and so I went in the following week to my audition, and I had never been there before. Mm. I was expecting a very small, like, church show. Yeah, really. <laughs> you know, like just this little little church theater. And so I went in and my mind was blown. And if you go out on that stage without without the big enormous sets and you're just this person on that enormous stage with Blank nothing stage, else, yeah. you are like, "Oh my word, I am the smallest little person right now." If for those of you who haven't been to Sight and Sound, it is it's a 180 stage theater. Right, mm-hmm. so it's you have the you have your typical front, and then you have like two wings that come towards the audience. So if, if you're in the in, you can get seating in the pit, and you can literally turn your head to the left and still see stage, and then turn your head to the right and still see stage. So it is literally like you're there mm-hmm. in some in some respects, mm-hmm. and they use the entirety of that stage for the most part of their shows. Yeah, and it is. If go just go it, yeah. it's worth it, it it's so yeah. much worth it yeah it was it was definitely humbling and i thought oh i'm in i'm in the wrong place i they're gonna realize that i do not know what i'm doing like there are professionals here um my audition went i guess it went pretty well and um i had i don't know a few weeks later i got a contract for no this is a long time ago but it was behold the lamb and mm-hmm. ruth and i was cast as ruth and i I remember my mom had to call me and she was like, you got, you got a contract and she was reading it. And then she was like, it's for behold the lamb and Ruth. And then we hung up and then she called me back and she said, wait a minute. It says that you're Ruth. <laughs> and I said, are you sure? Are you sure? Like, are you certain about that? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> um, and I was so terrified um, to go in there because I, I thought everyone's going to realize that I don't know what I'm doing. Like mm. I, I like I don't have experience. I'm not a professional. I, I just kind of do what I. It's gonna, yeah. I, I figure it out as I go along. Like what do I do? Um, but I, I think there's something to be said about. I mean, education is so important. But and I, at times I think I wish I would have gone to school for for acting or like to really like learn the craft of acting. But having the experience and being on the stage with a role where I'm very conscious of my body and what I'm doing and the choices that I'm making, that was like some of the best education that I could have because I was doing it every day. Mm -hmm. And there were days where I was like, 
what do I do with my hands? <laughs> okay, what do I do with my arms? It's the number one my, thing. What is my face doing? You know, mm. am I leaning too far forward? Am I am I showing interest in what this character's talking to me about? Mm. So it was just like very becoming very aware of myself, and I think, and then learning from my my scene partners. So they were they're still some of one of the, some of the best actors I've worked with um, at Sight and Sound, and um, you know they just they've taught me so much. They've just re- their reaction to my to my reactions and, th- and they're they're collaborating with me and they're listening to me and it's just it was it was really good really good for me that's good um i've heard so many things so many good things about the the staff at sign sound um in, in regards to, like the actors and, and mm-hmm. how just beautifully nice they are um what was it like i've heard did they do devos at that time i'm sorry devos do you know what like devotionals oh <laughs> um, I thought you said divas at first, and oh, I thought, no, mm, are there divas? <laughs> no, um, we would have, um, we would have. I mean, it, it's been during my time there. There were there were times where we would have devotionals, like before we would begin the day, and then other times we would just, you know, kind of begin our days. It was mm-hmm. all dependent on like who was, you know, production stage manager at the time. Um, but yeah, we would, we would have that time and, and just knowing that I could go into work and pray with my, with my peers and, and, um, and have that worship time beforehand was, was really, really cool. You know, I thought how many people get to do this and come to right. work and, and, and share this time together. That was one thing that surprised me when I was talking to Sam Ingram, mm-hmm. uh, was that, yeah, we go to work and we pray and we do Bible studies and I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah. And granted, I wouldn't have expected anything less from Sight and Sound, but just, just I didn't know that before, mm-hmm. so that was really cool. Did you? Uh, what was it like walking in there and then having the realization? Oh, they have animals on stage <laughs> here. Well, that was one of my favorite parts. <laughs> um, there was particularly there was a donkey that I got to work with um, for Miracle of Christmas, and I got to um, have significant like stage time with him, and and then training time with him. And he was just the sweetest donkey. Now he's retired, and he's mm. with. Um, his owner, but um, he, it was just a highlight to me. Some of the animals I didn't care for very much, like the camels. <laughs> I didn't care for, didn't the, care camels for the camels. Here. They just always seem so dirty to me. <laughs> that, yeah, that's um, fair. But they, I will say, Sight and Sound treats, uh, they treat the animals so wonderfully. Like, they, they're very well cared for, and um, and that was like... So you can't have well-trained animals without yeah taking care of them properly. If, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you any circus will know that uh, if you mistreat the animals, they're going to act up during the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, they're they're. I mean, they have a great life. Yeah, they, great lives. Yeah, and it's it's really incredible. Um, I've heard. I I want to get animal handlers from there on yeah. because I would just love to because I I've heard that there's so many because animals they're unpredictable. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a lot of cases, oh. I've heard. <laughs> I've heard so many stories of, with with just David. A sheep will just fall over, mm. and it, they have to pick it up because yeah. apparently sheep just fall over yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah. Sometimes there's poop, and you got to step around oh. the poop. And... Do I have stories about that? <laughs> you want to tell one? <laughs> sure. Um, so this was years ago um, during Miracle of Christmas. Um, when I played Mary, I had to uh, ride the donkey side saddle down the center aisle singing. Mm. At the time, it was Breath of Heaven. Do you remember that old Amy Grant song? But we had rights to the Sight and Sound had rights to that song. But anyway, we uh, Mary would sing that, and then we'd get to the the foot of the stage right before getting up to the stage, and um, and I would turn around and finish the song with the donkey, and then uh, I could tell that my donkey Willie was his name. I could tell that he was about to use the bathroom. And I thought, oh no, oh no, 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 not right here in, in the center aisle where all the, where all the guests People are, are sitting. sitting. And, um, and there was always, sometimes I couldn't maneuver him very well to get mm-hmm. like far from um, the one person that would sit on the corner um, on, on the oh, left no. side of the audience. And, um, and he, I couldn't get him. I kept pulling him, pulling him. I'm trying to sing the, wrap up the song. And and he used the bathroom right at this patron's feet. Oh and no! I was mortified, and that poor person was like, 
I mean, it was on him. Like it was. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no. it was on the person. And so I, I finished the scene, and then when I was able to go back to the dressing room, I was like, "How is the person? Someone needs to notify me about this person. Update me about him." And I ended up writing him a note, and I was like, "I'm so sorry. I was trying to pull the donkey away from you. I knew he was going to use the bathroom." Um, <laughs> Did you ever get a response? I can't remember. I mean, I don't think he was angry or anything. Oh, that's, that's good. And I think that the ushers, the ushers are so good. Oh, the they're, ushers, they're, they're quick prime. to like, take care of stuff. Yes. Um, but yeah, I think I think they cleaned him up. <laughs> I, I, I would hope so. I don't hope they he got compensated for, oh, for that. Because yeah. oh my goodness, that was terrible. What a story to have. I got pooped on by a dog. <laughs> oh. People are like, how'd that happen? Well. Oh. Oh, oh no. It's a, yeah. But I I was pregnant twice when we did Miracle of Christmas, mm. um, and pregnancy unfortunately comes with morning sickness for some oh. women, and and just being in the presence of some of that <laughs> was awful for me. Like anytime anything would happen, I'd I'd have to like <laughs> right. get off the stage. <laughs> that, that's uh. One one story I have from that is actually from Ruth when we did it here at LBC. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you remember this, but one of the nights the uh, boat had caught the rope of the curtain. I remember that. And I was the only one who caught that. I was it was a time when I was backstage. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I had saw that and I was like, oh, it was. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I had I had to hold the rope on for dear life mm-hmm. uh, because I'm pretty sure if that boat had kept going, the whole yeah. current would have fallen down. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, that's a very it was a very strong current. Yeah. And from what I heard from uh, Britt Drakowski was that the boat was almost going to run into the orchestra pit too. Yeah. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. But I was just holding on for dear life, and uh, thank God for the wisdom and the awareness of Brianna now Wilhelm, mm-hmm. who just calm as ever yeah <laughs> i remember that and heather and i were like <gasps> heather Greyberg and i we we witnessed it all you saved the day yeah and um, and brit yeah yeah or uh, brie yeah uh, brie yes the, the the it's so interesting to me how you, in your mind you can realize something is going horribly wrong but as an actor you just have to ignore it yeah. And you have to keep going with the story. And so casually just... And so what? casually, like, like <laughs> as if it was part of the show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And just keep moving on. And that's the crazy, craziest thing to me is that you have to have that, that awareness mm-hmm. and that comfortability to be okay with and not let it show. Because mm-hmm. if it were me, I would have broken instantly and just ran for it. Mm-hmm. On, like on stage, I would have ran for it. Yeah. Um, but to just calmly realize, say, hey, that's happening. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep singing my solo song and walk slowly walk towards like nothing's happening. Yeah, Bree did that so beautifully. Yeah. <laughs> I have a clear vision of that. So you said you mentioned that you were pregnant. You were pregnant during our production of Ruth too. I was you? with our third yeah. baby. Yep. What What is it like to be pregnant in the industry? Oh, well, to be running around a huge stage. Well, let me back up. I when I was pregnant with our first little girl, um, I was seven months pregnant during Miracle of Christmas, and to <laughs> to hide that. I mean, granted, of course, Mary was. Of was, course, oh yeah, pregnant. I was, I was thinking, it's <laughs> like, oh, what, what a coincidence. <laughs> um, but the, you know, there's part of the show that she was not with right. child, and um, so that was difficult for the costume um, department to hide. Um, mm. But it was also really <laughs> tricky as just an actor trying to maneuver on the enormous stage and just mm-hmm. dealing with the morning sis- sickness, the fatigue, and just being on my feet all day, you know, it mean three shows a day. And it was like, at what point in the pregnancy were you when, when, it, uh, when you were at the show, was it like first trimester, second trimester? Third so that trimester? would have been third trimester. Oh, yeah. wow. Like so, se- seven so, months along, I was like ready to go. So suddenly, suddenly Mary just gets bigger. <laughs> yeah. Mary was big. <laughs> like people would be like, is Mary, is Mary really pregnant? <laughs> and the ushers would be like, yeah. Yeah. And that's her husband playing Joseph. <laughs> um, but, I, you know, I, I mentioned that Mary had to ride side saddle mm-hmm. on the donkey. But I did get to a point where, you know, when you're when you're pregnant, you can't you're, you're, your abdominal muscles, they separate. Yep. And so 
I, whenever I had to hop up onto the donkey side saddle, you know, you use a yeah, lot of your yep. abdominal strength to, to, do, to do that. that. I got to a point where I was like, I, I can't, I can't even stabilize myself. So mm. I would just have to walk the donkey down the aisle. I mean, so gradually over the course of that run <laughs> that year, we were like stripping away some of the things for Mary because mm-hmm. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. Yeah. And well, so, uh, and you were both pregnant uh, with the first two children during that particular show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What were you doing uh, in regard? Because you were pregnant during our production of Ruth at LBC. Yeah. Was that your only job at that time, or or were were you doing other film projects or acting projects? Yeah. Um. A great question. I well, once I'll back up, and once I had we had our first baby. I continued working at Sight and Sound and then and that was really difficult because my husband and I were both working the same schedule mm. and working um a oh, theater yeah. working a theater schedule with a child is so hard on a family because it's not that it's not that in theater you're working more hours than anyone else it's just the hours that they are yeah are very tricky cuz you don't do school at 7 o'clock at night right and and for me as a parent it's so important for me to have one of the parents be mm-hmm. tucking the children into bed. Like it's important that a child has, in in my opinion, um, for our family, it's important that um, that you know my children know. Okay, mom or dad will be here tonight to tuck us in. It's very important for mm-hmm. uh, yeah for developmental purposes because mm-hmm. if you little stuff you do as a as a to your children is mm-hmm. going to stick with them subconsciously for absolutely a long time yeah i believe that too and um so once we had our second one shortly after our first i mean they just came one right after the other <laughs> um then i was like okay now it's time that i'm done like i'm mm. i'm done working the full-time theater schedule um and so that's when i decided to stay home and my husband continued working and and i thought well now is the perfect time for me to be working film because mm. the beautiful thing about film is that I can be a stay-at-home mom and then when I get booked for work, it's maybe like one or two days a week mm-hmm. and and the pay is similar to what you would be p- getting paid for a full-time job or a part-time job um, depending on the booking that I would get. And so it it was just the per- – it for me, for, I've been doing this now for – um. 12 years and it's just the perfect scenario for our family um i'm available to my kids and i can i can be doing the thing that i love a lot Uh, nothing more than my children of course but but yeah i I love i love being able to still act and and be creative and do this craft and occasionally i get to do theater now in terms of that i i uh i i'm choosy with the theater Mm. product projects that i get because um, that takes up so much of my time, you know, when you get booked or mm-hmm. you get booked for a show, it's like lots of rehearsals and, and yeah, tech week, <laughs> tech week. And that's a lot of time away from, from my family. And so, um, if I get offered something, I really consider it because it's, I think okay, how valuable is this to me? Like, is it, is it something that I really, really, really want to do? And I really have to want to do it mm-hmm. to be away from my children. Um, how old are your children now? 12, 12, almost 10 and two. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I was like, two. I was like, yeah. oh yeah, that, that yeah. was I was about pregnant. Two years ago. Yeah. During, yeah. during Ruth. Yep. Um, um they, so, ha, have they had showed any interest in the theater at all? So I don't know if you remember, but my oldest was in Ruth at L- LBC. Um, you, it, me, who she, she, she played, um, the wagon daughter. She threw the grain of wheat. That's right. Yes. Ruth. <laughs> that's right <laughs> you're so sweet um they don't have much interest in theater they're 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 doing ballet right now and they mm. love that um but they really excel when it comes to like doing film um and i think there's something to be said about stage actors and film yeah actors. I, was, I was gonna ask that yeah. what's what, like uh but we can get into a little bit later yeah well i mean and and seeing that as a child like my both of both of my older two they're they don't like a lot of uh energy like they get overwhelmed if there are a lot of like gotcha. super energetic people which is pretty bad for comes theater. with theater yeah. <laughs> um 
Um, I love you theater people, but but, yeah. also. <laughs> <laughs> but also that's hard for, for some people that are very introverted. Um, but um, when they've done film, they do so well with it because it's so intimate. Mm -hmm. It's so quiet. And it's just the director saying, hey, now you're going to do this and you're going to do this and then you're going to walk over here. And they're like, okay. Like it's just simple and they, it's a calming environment. That's good. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think theater is really for them. If they want to do it, great. I'll, I'll encourage that to happen. But, um, but yeah. That's awesome. So what was it like transitioning from auditioning to theater to auditioning for film? Mm, that's a good question. Um, man. I mean, you want to you want to have I've learned that you want to have like the same kind of energy when you first walk into a room, you know, like mm -hmm. and, and I think that goes for any time you're meeting someone for the first time. You want to be very welcoming and friendly and um, and that and you have to be that way when you're auditioning for musical theater or or for film. But definitely for film, everything is smaller so yes so right you know for for musical theater you can be bigger and you can be bombastic and, mm -hmm. and so i wouldn't i wouldn't give the same audition definitely right. for musical theater as i would for film film is so small and and if you record yourself like i've recorded myself for you know self tapes for musical theater and for film and it's like woo, woo, woo. but that's the thing everything is self tapes now because of covid and mm -hmm. um and and I I will watch like okay I have to really dial that down, <laughs> um, but but I definitely enjoy doing um, like auditions for film more than theater be or yeah more than theater because I feel like it just comes more naturally. Mm. I'm not a very outgoing person. I don't think I have a very huge personality, and and being in a more quiet calming setting is definitely more for me. That's that's funny. Yeah, it is so interesting. I, I, I love I like meeting um like introvert theater people because it's just a rare breed. <laughs> yeah, when I'm around theater people, I love them all, of course. Right. But I I'm like okay, I'm 20 minutes in, and that's about all I can do. Yep, <laughs> I have to go sit alone for a little bit yep. to recharge. <laughs> if you don't know where I'm at, it's okay. I'm yeah. fine. <laughs> You've sucked the energy out of me. Right. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so you, you mentioned that everything is smaller in, uh, film. So how did you have to manipulate your face? Was it harder to do, was it hard to adjust to the way of acting where you had to make everything big and giant or was it, was it easier or harder to do a uh, film where everything is more nuanced and, and, uh, yeah, I think, um, I, I would I would record myself and just watch what I liked and what I didn't like. Mm -hmm. And that's how a lot of my learning like happened. Like it was just like okay, that was t that was too much of an expression. Like mm. so I'm going to take that back. And and I think when I'm on set and I'm working on a scene, it's helpful for me to take a minute if something didn't feel quite right. It's helpful for me to be like, "Can I watch that playback so I can see what I did? Something just didn't feel right and I want to make sure" that I'm correct in thinking that. And so I'll watch it and I'll say, okay, I know what I need to do, to do now. I mean, it's an art. Like you, it's like photography. Everything has to be like, you know, if you get a picture taken of yourself, you're like, you know what? My eye is like a little smaller right. on this side. That's how that happens to me. And so I like, it's a lot to, it's a lot to focus on. Um, but yeah, I, I think to answer your question, I think it just, it comes easier for me with film, um, with stage, uh, I don't, I don't think I take as much time to consider mm -hmm. like what my face is doing. I just want to express it, um, in a bigger way because that's what is needed. You and know, whatever way it comes out is the way it's going to be. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yep. So what was your first film project that you worked on? I remember, um, I got booked with my agent years and years ago for a, um, I was, it was for a medical supply company. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> Dreams being made right, right there. Yeah. Um, and I was so nervous that the client would know and find out that it was my very first job. Mm. And um, I told one of the other actors on set that day, I was like, this is my first job. And he was like, okay, we won't tell anyone. <laughs> um, and I was so nervous, but it went fine. And really for for a job like that it's not that 
I'm like, wow, m- my life is made. Right. <laughs> <laughs> those those jobs are more like let's pay the bills. Right. Um, but th- it's it's the short films. It's collaborating with writers and directors mm-hmm. and um, and feature films. Those are the those are the the projects that I really really love because I get to actually do scene study. I get to work on a character and consider what this character is thinking and feeling and why they do the things they do and why they react the way they do. Um, that's fun for me. I mm. love that. So how much time is spent into the character study in order to, to uh, until you're satisfied with, with where the character's at? I would say the second I get the script, I'm working on it until we shoot it. I mean, for me, I, I sometimes it's just in my car. I'm just going over the scenes, going over them, and until they feel natural, until they, until I'm really considering what I'm saying and why I'm saying these things, um, and what what actions I would put with that. You know, would my character be a very like frenetic kind of <laughs> um, character, or would my character be very? Um, you know, subdued and and subtle with with her her movements. You know, her physicality. Um, it's just piecing all of that together for me is super fun, and that's where my nerdiness, I guess, comes out. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Do you? Uh, what is one of your biggest struggles that you have into like adapting to a character or putting that on the stage? You, you mentioned your your face a little bit, but mm-hmm. is that the biggest struggle you think you have? Or no, I think being confident. I. I'm not a very confident person. Um, and especially in terms of singing, I'm not a very confident mm. singer. Um, I enjoy it, but I get super nervous. Um, so the nerves, more so for stage, get the best of me. Mm. Um, I love it. And while I'm doing it, I'm like, this is awesome. I'm right. so glad I did this. Um, but in rehearsals for stage, I'm a nervous wreck. Like, I cannot let those nerves just. I can't trust myself, mm. but with film, I do trust myself, and I, I really, really love it. And there's, there's really, um, it's a just a different process for me. But with film, with stage, I'm, I'm constantly going over the scenes, constantly singing the songs to get it perfectly right that time, and, and, and then working on the scenes and trying to discover, like, uh, you know, what if, what if my, my scene partner makes this choice on this particular day how would i react what would my response be how would how would i change the way i say this line you know it, it's it's a lot to consider and some people maybe don't realize you know what an actor might do and what they might study beforehand mm-hmm. you know it just it doesn't always come naturally no um and while well i did say it film in terms of film it I enjoy it a bit more because it feels more natural. It's not that it is mm-hmm. like riding a bike. It's like, okay, I want to study this and make it as perfect as I can because I care about this project. Yeah, it's super interesting. The uh, I've been doing voice work because I have one of the, mo- the most hysterical laughs ever <laughs> that people like. Um, and uh, I also like to do my own my own little stuff. So I've been doing a lot of voice work for this Halloween piece I'm making, where uh, I'm acting as if I have to get into this place. I'm escaping some some something, and uh, it just happens to be the wrong house. You know, there's clowns, there's <laughs> witches, there's all these other things. So it's been a lot of fun uh, learning how to manipulate my voice in different ways and figuring out. Uh, how to get the perfect take is mm. super hard because your your voice has limitations. Yeah. And your voice has a tendency to rest in a certain area. Yep. And but for like filming projects, you need to have your voice go all sorts of ways. Absolutely. To con- help convey the uh, message. Mm-hmm. And so that's it's one of the things that I didn't really I knew that it was a thing. But I didn't really appreciate it until I had to actually do it and then realize, oh, man, that's a lot. It is a lot. And that that goes for the, the same for um, stage, too, mm-hmm. because especially especially if you're working on a really large stage, the audience can only see so much Jeez, of what yep. your body is doing. And sometimes um, sometimes it's just listening. You know, if your mm-hmm. body's just standing there doing nothing physically, but they hear your voice um then in your voice is just one tone the whole time. It's not interesting enough. No. Like, and I remember when I was just 
starting out, I had a director um, who I, 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 this advice, like I use it to this day. So if you're listening, thank you. Um, I, um, he told me, you need to make your voice go up and down more. Like it is, it is so monotone and it has like a nice, just easy go of it, but like you need to make it go up and down. And I consider that now. Like I think about that because I do get into like a cadence where it's mm-hmm. just, it sometimes can be very monotone. Is it called inflection? Is yeah, the called? inflection. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I've real I really have realized that um, <laughs> um, just by listening back to recordings that I, you know, st- stupid recordings of me and my friends doing st- stupid stuff <laughs> that uh, my voice tends to, and I just realized just now as I was listening to those things and I'm still in that monotone yeah. kind of voice. I it I realized that that's kind of where my voice stays a lot, uh-huh. and it, it doesn't work for engaging content at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, and especially when I'm having to deal with children, it doesn't work at all if you just keep in a monotone voice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have to go up and down up and, and all down. around. I know, and sometimes I notice as a parent, like I'll talk to my two year old if she's not listening, and I'm just like, Marley, you know, I'm saying something to her. But if I go, hey. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then she yeah. her ears perk up, and she's like, "Oh, what does right. she have to tell me?" You know, yeah. and it's just the the you know the variety it helps. I was just at my niece's high school graduation, and her principal spoke, and the principal was like, "Welcome, class of twenty twenty two. Thank you so much." And, you know, and it was I was like, "Are you kidding me? Show some life, please." <laughs> that that is the one thing I hate about all graduation <laughs> ceremonies is that the most monotone person in the entire world <laughs> happens to be not the the main speaker is typically better but it's always it's always the principals and, and the and the presidents and, the, yeah. and yep that they just hi guys welcome <laughs> to graduation 2020 yeah 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 but i thought oh he needs he needs a, he needs a little some. class on that <laughs> right yeah it's it, 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 and granted yeah it's a lot of work to do that but it's not that much work no um and it, it's really simply just uh <clears throat> i have always talked to myself and i found i found that that it's it's helpful to do that um because not only not not only am I hearing myself, but I'm also getting a chance to like play around with my voice because uh, I get to talk to myself. And yeah. that, and I I realize that as I talk to myself more and more, I start to get bored with myself. So I start, <laughs> so I start to, to make it more around. interesting. Yeah. Um, how has your faith played into the choices you make as a uh, actor, mm-hmm. as a uh director etc what has your faith story always been i'm i've always been christian or was that more of a uh roller coaster journey for you no also? always i mean this has been my faith has been prevalent my whole life mm. and um of course as any christian you have your ups and downs of of life you know things that get thrown at you and you have to figure out how to navigate that and and find your your relationship with God, you know, times where it's stronger, times where it's um, <clears throat> weaker. Um, but in terms of being in this industry, especially for film, there have been things, that, um, offers that I've been given um, for films that I are not in line with my faith. And so um, I'm very choosy, not only in terms of how much time a production or filming would take for me but also what my character that I would be playing would be conveying to the Mm -hmm. world um you know and most of the time no one knows the stuff that I do and that's fine I don't care about that but but I care I care that what I'm giving to the industry is something that is um not necessarily just wholesome but but redeeming Mm -hmm. um uh, I want my characters that I play to be positive. And there was one time just a few years ago that I was offered a role, um, a lead role in this this feature film. And um, and I, I declined it because it really wasn't something that uh, was in keep, keeping in line with my faith. Mm. Um, and and I, I, you know, did I lose anything from that? No, I, I didn't. Um, I, I was certain in my decision, and I, I sometimes ask myself, would I want my daughters to see me do this? 
Um, and that comes along with everything, you know, what I wear, um, if I'm playing a character, what, what my character is wearing, what my character is doing, would my daughters be proud of me? Would I want my daughters to see me being this person? Um, and that helps me. I have three kids, three daughters, and it's important for them to know that their mom is, is portraying a somewhat of a wholesome life. <laughs> I'm sure that comes a lot with talking to your husband, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, there have been times when I've been like, I, you know, I don't know what my relationship will be with this other character. And, you know, he, he understands the way it goes and we have a solid relationship. So um, I would never, I don't, I can't foresee myself ever doing something where um, it would be, uh, you know, I don't know. Scandalous. Scandalous. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Scandalous. I, I, I wouldn't enjoy that at all <laughs> well he, he, right um that's it's kind of one thing i've always wondered because kissing scenes are, are like a uh, one of one of the bigger uh quote-unquote scandalous scenes mm -hmm. in uh theater and film uh is that a line for you i'm i feel like um thankfully a lot of the theaters that i've worked with like i the directors don't require kissing that's and good. we in fact we I was just cast um, as Viola de la Sips in Shakespeare in Love mm -hmm. through Creative Pursuits, and my husband got to play Shakespeare. Um, so before he was cast, I was I was like, you know, I don't know who's going to be playing William Shakespeare, but there's a lot of kissing. Like, how would you feel about that? And he was like, you, you just do what you have to do, you know. Um, but then he ended up getting cast. We never did the show because of COVID. Oh, Thank no. you. <laughs> so does anyone want to pick up that, that production and do it? I'd love to do it. But... Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it ended up working out perfectly. But right. during rehearsals, I thought, how would I do this with another another mm. actor? You know, um, I have uh, something in the works for next spring. And um, I just had a meeting with a director. This movie will take place in Arizona, being mm. shot in Arizona. And um, he, the director knew that um, my husband was an actor as well. And so he said, you know, there are scenes where your character... Um, has to be with another person be with another man and so we're just going to use your husband and they're you know that's you know that'll make things easy you know and and we won't make anything uncomfortable for you and and i appreciated that that's good uh so you had uh talked about doing many having many hats when you went into film mm -hmm. um what was one of the situations where you became a director or uh not an actor yeah um well thankfully um when david felty mr felty was here um and heather grayberg was was here for ruth um they they knew I, i'm pretty sure they knew that i had never directed at that point um but i was so honored that they asked me to come in and assist and direct. Um, and that was like a great taste for me to, to dive in and, and get a hold of like what what is involved in that. And that's something that I had always wanted to do. Um, and since then I've, I've um, assistant directed film um, and I've done other things in film as well. Um, there's actually a position called a second second AD. Yes. Which, <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. which never makes sense to me that that's the right. title. Um, but I've done that. I, I can't say that I always enjoy um, the other hats in in film. Um, my favorite one is acting, of course. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, I think it's good for anyone in any industry to be to be uh, having access to other departments, other other positions um, in that industry that you're in. So you see what the other person is having to live through and, and experience and how you treat that other person. Right. Yeah. There, uh, there can be a lot of, uh, it's, I don't, I, I don't know if disdain is the right word for it, but there, there's, a, there can be a lot of looking down upon other, mm -hmm. others because you're not an actor mm -hmm. or maybe that person went for acting and all the, and what they ended up in was, uh, set design or, or yeah. dressing yeah and and dressing can be very annoying uh-huh uh, so it's it so i i would agree with you that it's probably really important if you want if you love the the craft mm -hmm. to put on different hats and just see what it's like and that way because you it it is rare that we often self-reflect mm -hmm. and i often don't realize what i'm doing is 
might be hurtful to somebody else. But mm-hmm. once you once you've stepped in those shoes and realize, and it's happened, and now it happens to you, mm-hmm. you're like, oh my. Mm-hmm. And and it's just building unity, right? Exactly. And and truth be told, like if one if one little cog in the whole system, either stage or film, is not doing a wonderful job mm-hmm. at the end you know it like right yes. you, you know the audience will see it and be like something just wasn't i mean it was a good show but it was like you know something was just a bit the off. lighting wasn't great or yeah. like the costume the set could have been better um and that that i mean that is so evident in film especially because like if sound isn't great i mean everything can be visually beautiful and done so wonderfully but if the sound is not good mm-hmm. forget it <laughs> yeah, imagine Prince of Egypt without the soundtrack it has. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, or like any like any great piece of film, everything has to be uh, solid, and that comes from having solid relationships. Anything that's been rushed or anything that's been uh, pushed down, it, mm-hmm. you can clearly tell with, with all different productions. Um, you can clearly tell that something didn't quite. There was a disagreement here, obviously, because mm-hmm. yeah. you can tell. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so right now we're going to take a break. It's We're running off our time on the radio. Uh, we will be going. You're free to stay for a little bit mm-hmm. longer. Yeah. So we'll be going on. We'll be continuing on uh, Facebook Live at Facebook.com for slash a story. Where can people find you? Um. I'm ashamed to say Instagram, <laughs> but that's a big uh, that's a big thing for actors. And then also, um, I have a website as well. And I that's wish I LeslieTally.com. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Here I am. I don't even know what my website is, um, but I have one. I'll fill I'll fill up the time for you to find that. So <laughs> okay. it, it's it is really interesting how. Um, how important social media is for actors nowadays uh, post covid uh it it's kind of how y- you get your in in the world that's where people find you now mm-hmm. and that didn't used to be the case uh did you find it i'm i'm almost there okay so <laughs> one thing i've had to work on <laughs> I, I have it now <laughs> okay. okay this is really telling my age right it's leslie and tally and with an e dot wix site.com so w-i-x-s-i-t-e and that's an a n n e okay <laughs> yes a n n e cool and uh you, f- you can look her up on leslie tally and find her on instagram um and follow her what, what's one of your upcoming projects um i am actually going to be playing um a former amish woman in a little film called the pony card adventure and that's produced by uh, Recognized Productions. Recognized Productions. So if you, if you want to see some of her work, she's also done uh, film. Pro- I mean, you probably are on film for Ruth at Sign Sound. Yes. Or, yeah. Yes. So you can I'm find on the DVD. Find her there. And with that said, I hope the radio. Uh, we're we're gonna go into one of my songs for a little transition back to the radio. This is called "You Remain." This is a worship song I wrote two years ago during the fiasco that was COVID and realizing that, you know, everything isn't going to stay. Things are going to change, but God still remains. When I am weak, can no longer speak, you are there right beside me. When all hope is lost and I can't bear the cost, you are there paying it for me. And when things turn to dust and there's nothing to trust, you are there honest to me. Oh, it's clear who Crying 
So, we had, uh, before we went off the radio, we had talked a little bit about, uh, like, social media and that stuff. How instrumental, or how have you used that, have you had been forced to use that now more as uh, COVID has come in and Mm -hmm. you've got to, now we have to do videotapes of ourselves instead of actually going to the place. Mm -hmm. Has that been a challenge for you? Yeah, I, I think for me, I don't really enjoy, like, marketing myself Mm. you know like it just i don't know it just doesn't feel good like i don't be like being like here's a picture of me unfortunately that's a lot of how i get my work you know and and it's like showing what you're doing and like i'm working right now um and that's just the way it goes um so um i remember being at a job not too long ago probably a year ago and um another actor was like let me find you on instagram and i was like well you have like a professional Instagram account. I realized in that moment, I have like my kids on my Instagram account, you know? Um, So at that moment I realized, okay, I need to get like uh, just an Instagram account just for my my business. Um, So that's where a lot of like marketing happens aside from my agents that, that get me work and everything. So it's, it's through Instagram and, um, and, and Facebook just being involved, getting plugged in with a lot of, um, uh, the film groups throughout DC, Baltimore, mm-hmm. um, Central Pennsylvania, and uh, and just constantly looking and seeing what's available and what people need casting for, um, and so it, it just staying connected. Um, yeah, I would say that's uh, the majority of it. So you talked about having an agent. At what point did you realize you needed an agent? Right away. Right away <laughs> yeah. into the filming industry or the yes okay. yeah so. Um, I got my first agent probably 12 years ago, and um, she has been wonderful. Um, She's this older woman and just the sweetest lady. Um, And then I have two other ones as well. So what is what is the agent's primarily primary job or do you have different agents that do different jobs? Um, They all kind of do. They all kind of get me different work. 
um, when the agent gets me work that's like it comes very infrequently, but she'll get me work that's very high paying jobs. Mm. Most of the time that's print, which is not my passion. Print? So, <laughs> yeah, um, it's like standing with um, a bathtub or a refrigerator. Gotcha. So it's, it's like the deal, no deal. Yeah. It's like, models. can you just wear this and stand with this and just look like you're happy and enjoying your life? Mm -hmm. um, while that isn't my, you know, love and, and life, is, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like my dreams are being made in those moments. But they they pay so well, and sometimes you just have to take jobs mm -hmm. like that. And I I will say it's not that there's no there it's not that that doesn't have any skill or anything like that. There's a little bit of skill yeah. involved um, because everything has to be in in a job like that. Everything has to be exactly yes. right. Yes. Um. Not a hair out of place, and that's not right. my job. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but um. Yeah. It's sometimes I get that kind of work, and that's fine. Um, I have another agent that just gets me a lot of local stuff and I'm always grateful for that because then I don't have to travel far. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. So, um, but besides that, do you have to, do you also look for jobs as well? Yeah. And I, I get a lot of what I do through what I discover and what I find. Um, sometimes if I, like I mentioned, like Facebook groups, they're so helpful and people looking for production, looking for an actor, they'll say, you know, I need uh, I need a 30 year old woman or 30 to 35 year old woman for such and such. And uh, we need it for Wednesday. I submit and then sometimes I get it and sometimes I don't. <laughs> How easy is it for like local projects? If, if you don't really have any uh, expertise or, um, or, background, I guess mm -hmm. that is the word. Mm -hmm. uh, how easy do you think it is to, hop into those projects maybe not for a lead actor but for like yeah. maybe like a support like because oftentimes those ads are for some like support yeah roles. yeah i would say in order to be considered um you need to have yourself a good headshot um, really yeah you have to have a good headshot now sometimes my agent <laughs> that i've had forever she'll be like the client just wants to see a selfie. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I've paid all this money for headshots and you just want to mm -hmm. see a selfie? Okay. But sometimes that's what they want to see because that is showing more like of what you look like anyway, in a normal yeah. life. Um, in normal light. Yeah, yeah, in normal light. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so, yeah, but I would definitely say you're not going to get anywhere if you have lousy headshots. They need to be crisp and clean with great lighting a great photographer being able to, to direct you and um and that I mean that's gonna get you work. Unfortunately a lot of this industry is based on on looks and I don't mean in terms of like how pretty you are or how handsome you are. It's it's how the professional Well it's how professional how you how you promote yourself but also like sometimes it's it's a job where they need you to look like you're you know, you've had a rough life, you know, mm -hmm. or you, mm -hmm. you need, you look rugged, you look rich. Exactly. You look yeah. These things. So sometimes it's, you're too tall, you're too short, yep. you're too, you know, overweight, you're too thin, you're too pretty, you're too not as pretty as you need to be. You know what I right, mean? Yeah. Like, and, and I, and I don't like that part of the industry, but that has a lot to do with a character, you know? Yeah. It, you can't write out oh, this person's white or this person's black. You can't exactly. write that out. Exactly. Especially if that's part of the story. You, you yeah. can't write out, oh, this person's a woman or you can't write out, oh, this person has literally been breaking rocks their entire life. You yeah. can't write that out because that has a specific look. I don't look like I've, I, I don't look like I've broken rocks for my life, for my entirety life, but I have for a, a portion, a portion, a portion of it. Uh -huh. Uh so I probably wouldn't get that role, even though I have done it. I just don't look like I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I see castings all the time for a, a different race than I am. And I can't, I can't, can't I can't, from, I, yeah, I can't cast myself as that or I can't submit myself for that. And that's the way it is. And that's mm -hmm. fine. There's a place for everyone. So, you, so it's just a matter of finding that place and getting a really good headshot. How, how are the uh, prices for headshots? They vary. Um, yeah, I would say definitely under $500. Um, that much. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. How how much it, a, a, average? How much does a average headshot session cost? I think I had um my most recent one last um last spring, and I think it was um just for the session. It was like a, the higher two hundreds, but then okay, once so yeah, once you select so many images, and you know, right. and 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 to go along with how you how you see yourself and what you need to have in terms of getting work. Um, you need to know what your character is, right? Mm. Like, so if, if I see, we need someone that's a mom, <laughs> I get cast as a mom all the time because hello, yeah, I'm a mom. mom yep. Um, sometimes I get cast as like, um, you know, a, a woman who's, who's experienced a lot of hardship in life, you know, rugged and, and beat up. And, and so I, you know, if I, um, if I make a self tape for that particular casting, I will, I will wear the right clothes to make that right. happen. And, um, and so you kind of want to know like your five characters. Okay. Like, okay. like I'm a lawyer. I'm, I'm not really these things. Um, I don't see myself as these things. I'm just giving examples, but right. you know, lawyer, a mom, a police officer, um, a doctor, a teacher. So you want to know like, okay, these are the, these are the jobs that my type could could do in the film world um and that helps you to be able to find your your place so how do you find your type a lot of discovery and asking questions to other actors like how do you see me you know sometimes i'll be on set with other actors and they'll be like oh they're surprised you're a mom you have kids you know and mm. i'm like what really that's a surprise like i i thought that was my type um but but yeah, just just kind of seeing um, how other people perceive you, really. Um, mm. And 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 if you have an agent, have ask your agent like what what do you what do you see me doing? Oh, you would be good playing a nurse. I can see you playing a nurse. You know, um, and yeah, you just have to. And, and then once you once you think all of that through, then start submitting yourself for those particular characters and see if you get them. So it's all it's all about the wardrobe, yeah. The the uh, actions mm -hmm. and the headshots and mm -hmm. just knowing who you represent best or who you could yeah. represent the best. Yeah, and a lot of I mean, especially in LA, you know, actors will do a head headshot session where they're where they're actually like doing headshots of those characters. Like they have the scrubs, so they're gonna mm -hmm. they're gonna stand in as a nurse and portray themselves as as being a nurse. Um, they might, a woman might be the quirky, like fun supporting role character with like crazy glasses and like a loud like, shirt um, or Mirabelle something. Like from Encanto. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so it's just, and, and how you, how you promote yourself into the world because they, you know, a, a casting might come through, a film might come through and they're, they're like, we, we need, um, that fun sidekick character. Oh, she's perfect for it. Cause we can see her right there being that person. So it's almost like you have to take photographs to build your uh, resume. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, so because if, if you have headshots that are all the same, generally the same character, that doesn't give you much. Right. You're just going to get that work. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. So um, what advice do you have to people who, because uh, typing is a, is a big thing, like typecasting, and uh, it, there, it has its ups and downs to it. Mm -hmm. um, what is your advice to people who want to break out of their type that's a great question if you have any tips i'd like to know <laughs> um i would say you know there are so many resources online um you sometimes if i'm feeling like i want to be challenged i'll just look look up screenplays or scenes that um i want i want to practice mm. you know um the first one that comes to mind might be like um, Kate Winslet's character in Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Like that character that she played in that film was so different than so many of the other characters that she's had in her career. What was it? Just the free, a very free spirit mm -hmm. and um, a very um, not mentally stable. <laughs> gotcha. Um, and so it was fun as an audience to watch her play something like that. You know, so I recommend just practicing scenes, like seeing a movie, saying, you know what, I'm going to try that character now. 
find the scenes online and practice and practice and practice until you know what you might come to the point where you're like this feels this feels right like I can mm-hmm. play this type of character um so a uh, previous advice that was given um was that if you that you have to kind of play into your type as well mm-hmm. the, is that how I guess that's really important if you especially if you want to keep making money absolutely um yeah um so some of my headshots like one headshot my photographer that I used he was like this is your mom shot <laughs> like anytime you want to you want to submit yourself for the mom this is the shot you use because you are all mom right here mm-hmm. um if you want to go a little bit more um like you know single female this is the shot that you're going to use um if you want to go more uh i don't know wealthy a wealthy woman you know business type this is the shot you use um but yeah it's it's just everything is always different you never know what you're going to get so for a, a traditional photo shoot do you typically have multiple outfits on hand yeah so my wardrobe as leslie is what you see right now jeans and like a t-shirt or sweatshirt um when i when i go to a job sometimes they have wardrobe for me most of the time actors have to bring their own wardrobe Mm. depending on the scale of the production uh, in terms of budget um so i have probably more than i would say three quarters of my wardrobe at home is just clothing that i wear for film because it's stuff that i don't see myself as leslie wearing um and and you know and I I can take all the, all those pieces to a set and I know exactly which ones you know wardrobe will choose for me and they'll be like yeah this is the one you need to wear and I'm like yep I was I not surprised that. that you were gonna pick that one. <laughs> that's that's so interesting the amount of stuff I I didn't even realize that uh, headshots was kind of the way I um it's just stuff you don't think about mm-hmm. uh, so if you ever want to. So so is that advice you would give to uh, actors that are looking to break into spaces, really work on getting some good headshots in different uh, as- like roles? Absolutely. And, um, oh, of course, you know, Mr. Bigley. Yeah, Rob Dr. Bigley. Bigley. Yep. Hello, Rob Bigley. Um, he recently just shared um, a headshot that he had gotten done and – it was like he, like I think, I, yeah, I think he said he, he specifically told the photographer, I need like a rugged fire firefighter or something, something in like something rugged. And, mm-hmm. um, and so his shot was very geared to that. You know, he had the right kind of jacket on and the right kind of expression and, and it was spot on. It was perfect. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I always enjoy seeing Dr. Bigley's headshots because they're always different. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I guess that's that's kind of what he that's, has to do. That's exactly what you do. Uh, so, it, it, especially when we grew up and uh, with social media and we all, you know, the proper selfie angle is up here looking <laughs> down. Yeah. And that's, those are the only shots you will ever see. Uh-huh. It's, it's so interesting how different you have to uh, present yourself to you know, for, for like actual work. Mm-hmm. Um, not to say that influencers isn't isn't work, but for film, if you it's completely different. Yeah, absolutely. So, moving on from that aspect, you are a woman. I am. <laughs> uh, what was it like breaking into uh, the space as a woman? Did you have any challenges? Did you have any difficulties? Any bad stories? Any mm-hmm. any uh, sexism? Absolutely. Um, this. I would say um, being a woman and I can think of one particular project that I was involved in where I was not an actor. I was on crew for something. And so not being an actor for that project already. Mm-hmm. Just takes down yeah. A bit. Took me down. And I was like, well, that stinks. Like, I hope I've never as an actor treated anyone on crew this way you know Mm -hmm. um even from the director it was like you're beneath me that's enough um and it wasn't until i was nearing the end of my time on set and i was pregnant with my with my third baby at the time and i was dealing with a lot of morning sickness on set which stinks because it's like 12 to 14 hour days um and i was saying goodbye i was wrapped for my time and he said you're you're pregnant and I said yeah and he said you 
already have children? And I said, yeah. And it wasn't until at that moment that he started respecting me a little bit more. Um, and I think it was more less sexism, but more ageism. You know, mm. he I think he saw me as being younger um, and just being like, a, you know, oh, she's just like a college yeah. kid or something. She doesn't know anything. She's inexperienced. Um, but then when he found out that I was married with children with one on the way, his he treated me completely differently. And I I'll never forget that. And I thought I will never treat another young person in that way, um, the way that he treated me. But, you know, I have countless stories that I experienced on set with him that were just not not nice. Not nice. <laughs> not nice. So. Hmm. There's. Trying to, trying to think of, of, of the question I want to ask correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you, uh, do you ever feel like you should, if, to any of those people who are in those situations now, what do you think the course of action should be? Should they stand up for themselves? Should they uh, just quit all quit that project altogether? Uh, what, what advice would you have for... I'm all about standing up for yourself. Um, I mean, no job is worth mm -hmm. your, your dignity and you're a valuable person no matter... You know, a person is a person no matter how, you know, how small you are. Um, and I, I think, I think, uh, you know, I, no, no job is more important than, than what you are able to give as a human being. Um, and I, if, if I would have, I, I continued standing up for myself during that time in a respect, in a respectful mm -hmm. way, of course. Um, but uh, it wasn't, you know, I, I wasn't standing up to the, for myself to the point where like I was, you know, making him angry, you know, for him to kick me out or anything like that. But I, I will always stick up for myself and I want my, my daughters to always stick up for themselves. Um, there was one time I was on set for a feature film and, um, I was, I was, uh, there were background actors, men that were, I ended up getting surrounded by them and it was, it was frightening. Like it was absolutely frightening was that part of the act? Or? No, it, we were in between scenes and it was just like a, we were taking a short break and I was, I remember, I think I was just had gone to the restroom and came back and grabbed a snack and, um, and they just surrounded me and it was, it, and people were all around, you know, and I, it was, it was frightening. And, um, I ended up going to production, like a producer and I was like, this is not okay. Like, this is not okay. I feel unsafe. Like you were inappropriately surrounding you. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. And um and I was like, this is not okay. Like they need to they need to go. And you know, on film, you're gonna get all sorts of people. Mm -hmm. like, all, mm -hmm. all sorts of people. Most of the time it's fine and it's it's great to meet so many different people from so many different walks of life. But, you know, occasionally I get something like that. Now I will say as a female working in this industry, especially when I get a booking for a job that is directly through myself if I find the job myself, not through an agent. Um, I always, always, always make sure that when I'm given the location of a, of a production, I like use Google Earth and I check out the building and I make sure that it's safe and I make sure that um, it's a legitimate place, you mm. know, because unfortunately I could be, I mean, I'm, I'm basically connecting with people that you've never met. That I've never met, either through email, for phone calls, online, and and I have to be safe about it. And um, yeah, and so I always Google Earth it, and I'm like, that looks sketchy. Right. And then I look up production. I'm like, you know, trying to Google the production crew and like seeing like, okay, is this an actual person? Yeah, <laughs> person. Is this safe for me? Um, yeah. At one time, I was offered a, a role in a film where. Um, they offered me an exorbitant amount of money, like crazy amount of money. And I was like, that can't be right. I had one audition and they're offering me this. Um, it ended up being a total scam. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. It was a total scam. And this, this director, unfortunately, uh, targets, targets women. And, and that's just, the, unfortunately he's, He's out there doing this and and it's it's shameful and it's scary. And that's why you have to be smart. <laughs> you have to be smart and and really do your research. How does one uh, 
combat that. Um, cause there today there's, there is, uh, especially with people who have power, mm-hmm. it's hard to name them and then call them out. Uh, but you want to stop them at the same time. How does one yeah. go about that? If you have enough of, um, evidence, you know, and I, I did, I saw, I mean, I, I had connected with enough people and researched enough that I was like, yep, this is not, this is not right. I called him out on it and his response was not, not friendly. Well, I I would assume not. (laughs) You know, abusers don't like to be called out. No, but I mean, I, I wanted to take him down. It just enraged me. I don't like that for any, any person, but especially for young girls, because I knew that that was his target. Uh, Did you succeed? Um, I mean, as much as I could, but I think he's still at it, unfortunately. So, no, I did not succeed. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, so that's actually one of the considerations I, I took with uh, starting this podcast. There was a, a location that I had had uh, set up, but the surrounding area was just, it seemed sketchy. Like, mm-hmm. he, typically there's, like, open mics there. So mm-hmm. I, I know that it's safe and it, it's it's fine. But to the untrained person, you know, there's like a, a motorcycle club mm. beneath it. That's going to throw off some people immediately. Mm-hmm. Uh, people do, uh, they smoke pot in, in the rooms. So that's going to throw another whole group of people <laughs> off immediately. Yeah. So I was just like, this, this, even though it's a great space to have this, yeah, it's not going to bring in the right. people that right. I want to be able to bring in. Because mm-hmm. uh, I, I had to take into account, I'm gonna, I want to have Christians on the show. I want to mm-hmm. have, uh, and even this place isn't the perfect place either because uh, at Lancaster Bible College, you, you can't, you know, you can't do drugs. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and that, and that, that includes. Most places you can't. Most, well, I, but I'm even talking about yeah. like smoking yeah, and right. uh, drinking <laughs> right. is something that you can't do. You can't mm-hmm. curse on the radio. You mm-hmm. can't. And to be fair, I want to have a family friendly show anyway. Sure, so absolutely. That's that's it, great. But it was ideal. Mm-hmm. First off, <laughs> the only real grievance I have with this place is it doesn't have a proper address because college campuses just hate actual addresses mm-hmm. for whatever. For well, whatever I found reason. it just perfectly. So yeah, it, it, <laughs> thankfully it's super easy to get here. But uh, um, it's what was I talking about? <laughs> Oh, that's okay. You were talking about location and being like at a legitimate place. Yes, because and... it's at a college that's mm-hmm. already in of itself kind of legitimate, and um, it's a it's a college that's you know relatively well known, very professional college, uh, and it's a very professional space. Any anyway, mm-hmm. so it, so I was very ecstatic to have this uh, place, and uh, to top it off, I didn't have to pay for anything. Yeah, that's perfect. It's super, super, super nice. No um, overhead. <laughs> very, yeah, I'm very blessed to be able to do the show because I don't make anything off of it. It's just mm-hmm. purely a passion project that I want to do. So, <laughs> what are other uh, red flags that you that you search for when finding a project? Mm. Or what are red flags that you've seen <laughs> in directors, cast members, crew members that? Uh, that people wouldn't typically see as a, a red flag. Hmm. In terms of things moving along or in terms of like safety? But we'll do both. We can do both. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I would say if there's not a producer <laughs> on set, things aren't going to go well. I mean, if for someone to be there, <coughs> excuse me, for someone to be there keeping things on schedule mm. and communicating with the director and the assistant director, that's essential. Like, I mean, everyone is needed, but like, right. if there's not a schedule uh, for the day, Nothing's good, happening. good luck. <laughs> like you're going to be there forever. Um, and that's why it's so good because it's like any kind of art, you know, if you're painting or drawing, you're always going to be like, I'm just going to add a little bit more. I'm right, going to add a yep. little bit more. And the, and the classic line in film is just one more one for more safety. Time, one more time. <laughs> just one more time for safety. Um, so you could be doing the same shot all day long. It's hard to it's hard to call it quits, you know, because mm-hmm. you want to make it perfect. So um, yeah, that that's always been that was one thing when uh, doing our school <laughs> film project was. Uh, do you know Ryan Giesemann at mm-hmm. all? Yeah. yeah, he's one of the best per- people to keep us on ske- to keep somebody <laughs> on schedule that I have 
and I, I'm really, I, I like to be on schedule as well. But oh my gosh, he was like, by the way, we only have this much sunlight. By the way, we only have this much, uh, whatever it, it be, and we have to get the shot now or it's done. How difficult? Because there are some people who aren't the best at memorizing lines, right? How difficult is it to? But granted, you you work with professionals. Is there ever uh, a time where you and there's countless bloopers, right? <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Uh, is there a time where you have to sit an actor down, actress, or and say, "Hey, if we don't get this shot." There's nothing more we can do. Yeah, there are times that things just don't work. Um, recently, I had um, a, a stylist contact me, and she said, "We have, <laughs> excuse me, we have a toddler on set, and she is not cooperating. Mm. Like, we need you to come in with your child." I wasn't able to that day, but sometimes that just happens, and it's the way it goes. Um, in terms of line memorization, like that slows th- things down significantly. Um, with anything, you have to be prepared. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know, um, you have to know your lines like better than anything because nothing can happen if if you don't know your lines. If you're constantly right. looking, and if you're like, oh, I'm so sorry, I gotta read. What is? Oh, that's that's another thing. How how much is ad lib okay? Because there's there's I there. Countless times, and this this kind of goes for like music playing as well. But if you make a mistake, it really grinds my gears at least, and and I know plenty of other gears that grinds too. Where the musician will stop and say, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'll restart that," or um, like during a performance, sometimes it is warranted. Sometimes you're just way off, and you just have to restart. That's mm-hmm. it's happened at a few recitals, and that's totally understandable, uh, especially if you've just started. You're mm-hmm. like, "Okay, I, I got mm-hmm. to restart." But um, like halfway through a monologue or halfway through a, a passage, and sometimes you you mess up. Do, do you, in acting, do you keep going? Is that like a thing you have to keep going, or you should keep going, or is it okay just to just reset everything? Yeah, sometimes um, sometimes if I mess up, I'll uh, just repeat the line, take a beat, repeat the line, <coughs> and start again. Um. And then other times the director will just say cut and we'll re- reshoot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's um one thing is uh, I I stutter and slur my words a lot uh, because I'm not the best at speaking, and I also have I'm not very good at, at enunciating. Uh, that's something I've learned a lot <laughs> while listening to myself on the podcast. I need to enunciate better. Um, so is it is it best for an actor just to reset themselves? And uh, state the line again because I, I know some people I've worked with who just who make this big scene it's like oh I'm so sorry I'm and they they just keep going on that train is it it that's not necessary yeah it's I mean, not necessary I mean it happens you know and right. everyone is expecting something like that to to happen um, on a super pro- professional level like um, recently one of my friends was just on a network TV show as a supporting character. And she messed up her lines and she just, in that moment, she was like, oh, this is like super, super professional. Like, what do I do? Because she's, you know, she's done a lot of, a lot of stuff in her career. Mm -hmm. But for this particular project, she was like, that's right. I can just, I can just stop. They're not going to cut. They're just going to keep rolling. And then I just pick up where I left off or I start from my line completely over from the beginning again. Mm -hmm. And everyone just knows. Everyone is so familiar with the script and that's the thing you have to be so familiar with the script and your lines and where you are in the pacing um to be able to just stop at any given point and then pick up and start again that's good so if and that's one thing uh that can be said for many many uh occupations within like the entertainment realm if you mess up don't acknowledge it first off that's just wasting time and it it's and it's letting your audience know, especially if you're doing live, mm-hmm. that oh they messed up. Yep, that's bad. Yep, uh, you just have to keep going, uh, especially like in theater when mm-hmm. when you're working around at, at Sight and Sound with like animals and everything, mm-hmm. and so many other things can just go wrong. You mm-hmm. just have to real. You just have to. You can't say. You can't break character first off, and because that's, it's that's 
probably the worst thing you could ever do. Yeah, exactly. I just did a a film where I my character had so many monologues and it was all in one in one scene. And um I wasn't sure how the director was going to film it. I wasn't sure if he would be, you know, stopping after each monologue or mm. just continue rolling. And he continued rolling and I was like, Oh yikes. Like I have to be on with this. I have to be prepared. And there were times when I forgot things or like I skipped ahead to the next monologue <laughs> and I would recognize it and I would just say, I'm, I'm taking it back to, you know, the the previous monologue. Um, and that's just what you do. It's some some directors, they, they function a little bit differently. It just all depends on it, basically the job. The point is to get the job done, right? you know, as quickly as possible um, and efficiently. Um, you don't want it to be an editing nightmare because not only do you have to worry about the production while it's happening, but then somebody has to clean it all up. (laughs) That's right. Um, that's something I I learned a lot about when we, we did our, our film project was like, oh my gosh, editing is a nightmare Mm -hmm. and that's not for me. Yep. I I thought I could, I could do that. It doesn't seem all that hard, but. Uh, especially because the audio and the video are completely different mm-hmm. uh, track, and you got to mend that together. And one of the biggest problems we had was getting the clapper in frame. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. even that, and and that goes back to what we were talking about before. And every every little cog has to be exactly right, and and that goes all the way until it's completed after mm-hmm. after you know post and everything. It's small, th- and it's crazy how much time you can waste without even realizing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, one one of our uh one of the students um so like if someone isn't confident enough to say action when when after the clap is done and everything or, or they're not they're like absently minded thinking of something else or they they forget oh wait i have to say action mm-hmm. or wait i have to say sound speed speed yeah yeah and then that kind of stuff and, and cut oh you 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 said cut or we keep rolling or, or you know that kind of mm-hmm. that kind of thing it's yeah so everybody has to be on it. Yeah. It's a lot of listening and being, like I mentioned before, being aware. Um, you know, There have been times when I've been to set and the director doesn't say action. You know, I've been like, uh, can, you, can you give me an action? Because I don't know when to start. Um, but, but you, I mean, you're on until from action until cut. Until cut is said, you're, mm-hmm. you're in it. And you you can't break character because no. as soon as you break character, that's when the cut comes. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you, you just have to keep going. Yep, exactly. Um, so being involved in the film and the theater, and you said you at first you weren't well. At first, you weren't very well connected at all. Mm-hmm. And yeah, not at all. How does one uh can get connected into the world? You had mentioned some Facebook groups, and that's one yeah. way. But I would assume the major way would by would be by making real life uh, interpersonal human, cr- yeah human, human cr- connections yeah, yeah. Um, I mean Instagram has been a, a great way to make that happen but when I first started out you know looking back twelve years ago there weren't a lot of production companies in Lancaster like it was just very few so when, mm-hmm. anytime I would get booked for something I'd have to drive like maybe two hours, three hours away. There weren't a lot mm. of a lot of jobs here in Lancaster. Um, but now I, it's to the point where, like, I can do primarily all my work in Lancaster. And nice. it's awesome. Like, it makes me so happy to be living here. But um, when I first started out, I Googled all of um, production companies in Lancaster and surrounding areas, and I personally reached out and emailed every single one. And I was like, hi, I'm a local professional actress. I'd like to be considered for blah, 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 blah. You know, keep me, <laughs> keep me in your talent pool and, mm-hmm. and hopefully we can work together. So it's just advocating for yourself. You are your marketing. Yes, you are the product. You're the product. And you <laughs> have to realize that. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the most helpful things that I've realized over this podcast is, uh, first off, the way you, the title of your email, so I've always been confused of what, what the title of your, your email, but uh, one of the most helpful things I've learned is you have to first put your name in it mm-hmm. and then the purpose. Mm-hmm. And that, also for resumes, because if you just save your resume as resume, yeah, pe- it's going to get lost yeah. immediately. And you have to say, oh, this is blank blank's resume. This is mm-hmm. Corey Rosen's resume mm-hmm. uh, and preferably the date yeah. as well. Right. Uh, 
<clears throat> and email. Oh my gosh, emailing is so important. Yeah. Uh, the way the way pulling back the curtain a little bit. The way I have been contacting uh, most of my people is through Messenger. That's that's how yeah. I contacted you, yeah. right? Yep. Um, and uh, <laughs> same way I contacted uh, AMT Server Stage, etc. That's how I got Wally Calderon, who's mm-hmm. who's going to be on the show tomorrow. Yeah. Um, the artistic director of Servant Stage, which is if if you don't know, that's like it's like the CEO of all theater. Pretty much. Wow, and he is a good one to talk to. I'm super excited for yeah. it. But uh, uh, just you know, finding people who are coming to Telus 360, the mm-hmm. Phantom Power, if you're familiar with that, mm-hmm. uh, and other like <clears throat> other Zotropolis, and emailing them or finding them, and then because uh, that's hard mm-hmm. to realize that because uh, I because there's so many people that I know on through Facebook mm-hmm. uh through my own uh experiences but then having to and for you got to consider what's professional mm-hmm. I, I didn't think that you, like mess sending a messenger uh was that professional but mm-hmm. I didn't really know where else to go to because yeah. it's <laughs> I've known companies are not very good at uh well to to be fair uh there's it, it's you don't want random people just messaging messaging you all these random things all the time mm-hmm. as well. So it's it's really hard to find who to talk to. Well, I think so many businesses are using, you know, social media as mm-hmm. their marketing. So I mean true, yeah. I think it's totally fine that you use Messenger for this platform. It's fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, I guess email is yeah, that that has been the case. A, a lot of people ha- have I reached out through Messenger and they're like, oh, you can reach this email. And then that it goes on from email from there. That that's fair. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Yeah, I think you're doing okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the networking, what for you though, was just a bunch of emailing constantly. Yeah, uh, all around yeah. reaching out and being like, "Hey, here I am. <laughs> Hire me. <laughs> Use me." Was there ever the fear for you for overbooking? Because I <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> um, no, I guess not. I, there that has never been a fear. That's like a a dream right <laughs> because you know i if i'm offered something i mm-hmm. can accept it or decline it and so if if that would ever happen <laughs> that would be a blessing and i would i would love that um although i will say there are times some weeks that i do feel like i am overbooked mm. um because primarily my role is as a parent and yes. i and i and i want to be as available as i can be to my children um and being on set it's they're long days you know, mm. when I'm I'm there, it's it's a long day, and <clears throat> I miss my kids. Um, it's not it's not your typical nine to five job, you know. Right. And, and so if I get two or three of those a week, that's a, that feels like a lot. And not to mention how tired you are afterwards because you're using all this. It's it's not like you're, I mean, it's not like you're doing like your regular like fa- factory jobs to <clears throat> make you tired too, but or like oh, sitting absolutely. at a sitting at a desk job. Yeah. But you're constantly. You're constantly talking, constantly moving, constantly get, getting direction, mm-hmm. constantly doing things over and over again that you've done a million times already. Yeah. It's, it, it must be ment- it's pro- mentally draining. Emotionally draining, mm. I would say. Um, yeah, and, and mentally. I, you know, being, being, having to take direction, exactly what you said, um, and being attentive. During, and being okay with it. And being well. like, okay, I'm so tired. I have a headache. The lights are bright. <laughs> Okay, what? Okay, I'm going to do sweating. this. I'm going to do this. And I have to be feeling this when really I'm feeling this. Yes. <laughs> um, it's like so gaslighting that's, yourself. Yeah. And um, recently I did a shoot where um, my character was grieving badly. Um, mm. and, um, and that was a long, <laughs> long shoot for me. And when I drove home that evening, like my voice was shot. Like mm. I, I, you know, I, I clearly wasn't using like the right um, way to use my voice because right. it was so exhausted. Um, but I was emotionally drained. Like, I, I don't think I could produce any more tears <laughs> <laughs> ever after that. I was like, I think I'm, I'm dehydrated from, right, right. <laughs> from, from crying so much. Um, but having to be on for that amount of time. And I think m- for me as an actor, the hardest thing is... Um, when you're surrounded by other actors for a specific scene and your character has to be emoting a specific feeling, 
um, or if, uh, conveying a certain um, emotion. Um, and then we, we, we're, we're rolling, we cut, and um, everyone just goes into chatting, you know, chat, chatting, chatting, chatting. Oh, let's talk about our day. Oh my gosh, that was so funny. And while I know we're about to roll again and I have to produce that same you, feeling again, switching. oh my oh, word, yeah. it's being on. Like it's it, trying to get to that headspace is a huge challenge. Yeah, and and that was, that was an, a, a famous time waster for like band. Is as soon as everything's done, chat, 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 and then yeah. you have to, you have to, then you have to prepare yourself again. Yeah, get that uh, at least for band amateur, right? And it's kind of uh, almost similar in some aspects to getting to that headspace yeah. of of okay, I, um, <laughs> you you go from this uh, this single mother who has maybe just lost her uh child. And now you go to, oh, I'm doing this on Wednesday. And then you have to go back to, yeah. I've lost my child again. Yeah, and I never want to be that person where I, when, where I would be like, can you guys just like not talk right now? Because right, this yeah, is what I need. Yeah. I never want to be that person. But of course, internally, I'm like, okay, how can I get to like a place of solitude and get to a place of like, okay, I want to be able to do this right and do this well. Um, so I just kind of have to shut down and if I'm, if I'm in a role like that right. and that helps me to know too, if I'm ever on the other side as an actor, you know, and if, if my, someone I'm doing a scene with, it has to produce those kinds of feelings. Like I will always just be quiet, like mm. just be quiet because that's what is needed for that other person. So what motivates you then after a long day of work to go back to your children and then, uh, care for them <laughs> properly? Um, I mean, I, I usually just tell them I'm tired. I, I, I hide no, nothing from them and mm. I, I want them to see that I work hard and that I enjoy what I do. Like that's important for me as a parent, for them to know that whatever they choose to do in life, it will make them tired mm -hmm. and they will, they should work hard for what they love to do. Um, and that's okay. Like, it's okay to come home at the end of the day. I don't need to put on a show for them and be like, that's good. you know, I, I, I'll just, I, I, even if they're asleep, I'll go in there and I'll, I'll give them kisses and they usually wake up and they ask how my day was and I'll be like, I'm so tired, but I love you. I, <laughs> so happy to see you. I'm going to go to bed now. <laughs> that's good. Um, there's so many countless times. Uh, um, I live with, uh, one of my friends, uh, and he's very much, talkative <laughs> and at some point of the day like and we've had we've been having the most crazy experiences at my apartment i was just telling leslie that last night one of my uh, a fire extinguisher that i keep in my room just in, you know just in case it exploded and uh, foam everywhere uh during the night ruined a lot of things and it's just like and he just wants to keep talking about it i'm like wasn't that crazy i'm like hunter <laughs> I am tired. <laughs> My clothes are also. I am covered with foam. The windows are covered. the The bed is soaked. I have to sleep on the futon tonight. I want to go to bed. And sometimes my lamp falls over because it it just wants to commit suicide or something. <laughs> and it, it's 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 like Hunter, don't touch it. Let it be on the floor. <laughs> I'm done. I, I cannot be bothered right. to fix the broken glass mm -hmm. right now. I, it's time for me to go yeah. to bed. Well, you know, and everyone processes stuff in different ways. Mm -hmm. You know, like for him, he that was a big deal to him. Right, yeah, like. oh, for and, sure, yeah. And, and I'm, not, I'm not discounting him at all. Yeah. Because if, if, if I had been, you know, aware or like had more energy at the time, I would have been the same. Like, oh, that's insane. I can't believe mm -hmm. that happened. But mm -hmm. it's also like at that point, it's – and I'm not I'm not rude to him about it at all. Oh, I'm it, sure. It's it's and things happen <clears throat> and you know frustrations are high sometimes, but uh, it's it's still like I I love him. He's he's, he's <laughs> one of my best roommates I've ever had. But at some point, I just had to tell him, "Hey, Hunter." <laughs> <laughs> Calm it down. Well, yeah. I, I go the other night I got home from a shoot and uh, I my kids were getting into bed and um, I was saying goodnight to my daughter Vivian and all of a sudden there was a spider walking on, oh, no. crawling on the wall beside her bed and she was like, oh, Mommy, can you please, can you get it? I was so tired. I did not want to get the spider. I did not care about the spider. I, was, I wanted to be like, just sleep with the spider. It's going to be okay. But um, she wanted me to get it so I went to get it 
and I did not get it, and mm. it went into her bed. Oh no! And I could not find it, and I thought, oh man, oh now this is gonna be a whole thing, and mm-hmm. I'm so tired, and I just want to go to bed. Um, and so, you know, going back to what we were talking about, it's I I have to I have to consider their feelings. I have to consider that they've had a long day or they've mm-hmm. missed me or they, you know, they have so many needs. Yes. And so I was like, well, you can either sleep in the bed with your spider or I can set up an air, ba- air mattress in my bedroom. And she was like, let's do that. So I was like, oh, <laughs> great. great. No, do this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, well, ultimately, especially with kids, I, dealing with kids uh, who are scared of like swimming and all that jazz, it, it's, at the end of the day, it, it is really fulfilling. Oh, and one hundred percent. So rewarding, even all the work you have to do, because you get to see them smile, mm-hmm. and then they'll be like, "I love you. You're awesome." And yes. that's that's all. It's the world. It literally is. They're my world. I I like I. They're all I think about. I mean, there are times that I can't wait to get away from them, you know. And I'm like, right, yes. Okay, I'm get to, I get to work today, and I'm so glad about it because I get to just be me. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, I mean, my my oldest is a writer. She's 12 and mm. she her heart is like the most beautiful heart. It she is just a gem of a child and um the things she writes, like seeing her talent for writing and drawing is like uh, so fulfilling to me. She just wrote a chapter book last night. She finished it. She'd oh, been nice. working on it for like 2 weeks. And I read it. It was long and it was the most beautiful sweet story and i thought that i don't care about anything she does in life but she she gets the importance of making a good story and jesus was in it and and it was the beautiful the way she incorporated christ into her story and i was just like she is wiser beyond her years like Mm. she is just the most beautiful child that's awesome yeah yeah um, so we're kind of wrapping up our, our time in general. There are some general questions that I'd love to ask and get your opinion on. So what has been your biggest support through all your journey? Has it been Christ? Has it been your husband? Has it been your family? Has it been your children? Hmm. Or- My biggest support. Um. I mean... Christ for sure. Right. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I was, I was, when I said that, I was like, duh. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like so passionate about this art. Like if it, if he hadn't given me, you know, the skills that I have and the, mm. the desire that I have to create stories that are um, edifying to him, you know? Um, but in terms of real people, <laughs> <laughs> um, my husband for sure. Uh, and my parents, I mean, my parents, the fact that they supported that I leave school, you know, back in college. Right, and they're yeah. like, you do you and you like you find your your dreams. And that I mean, even my grandfather like encouraged me to leave school. He saw me in my show in college and he said, wow. you need to go. You need to go do this. And that like that just stuck with me. Um Yeah, I'm getting emotional. But yeah, my and my husband, like anytime I have a self tape that I, I need an, a scene partner for he'll he's always there like he'll he'll have a, his own he has his own work and his mm-hmm. own long day and with children and with with his his career and then I'll, at the end of the day I'll be like I'm sorry but can you can you read for this character I just have to get this audition in and he'll do it and every time he's there for me to do that and it takes time and he's patient mm-hmm. and encouraging and I I love that and sometimes my kids will even read with me <laughs> and they'll be in the middle of playing and I'll be like, can one of you read for me? <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. So uh, what has kept you grounded throughout mm-hmm. all of these? You've been involved in theater, future films. Mm-hmm. Sight and Sound is a giant uh, theater. Mm-hmm. Uh, what has kept you down the center to the earth? And Yeah, um, that I don't know everything. Mm. Um, there's always something to learn. And I hope I, I go into every job, even if it's a print job where I'm standing with a refrigerator. I before I go in, I say to myself, OK, what can I learn today? Who can I meet? Who can who can I make an impact on or who can make an impact on my life? Um, because I'm constantly meeting new people. And, you know, some of them 
some of them know Christ and some of them don't. And while we might not be talking about Christ, I will do my best to be the best example of him that I can be. And, um, you know, and sometimes, sometimes people will say like, oh, you're so nice or you're this or that. And I'm thinking it's because of Christ, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is one way that you have found your faith challenged throughout your work? <clears throat> um, it's the, uh, the vanity of it. Oh. I don't like, I don't like, like I mentioned before, I don't like um, promoting myself. And so much of it is like, hey, Look here's a picture of me. I mean, right when we got here, I took a picture. And um, what I'm doing. Yeah. And, and I, I don't like that. But it, it unfortunately is part of the career. And so it's the vanity of it that I don't like. Caring about, oh, is my hair too frizzy? Do I have enough makeup <laughs> on? You know, I don't like that. Most days I just don't have any makeup on at all. So so, uh, so, has pride ever been a problem for you? No, I don't think so. I mean, I'm sure it has. I'm mm -hmm. sure it has. Um, because I struggle so much with confidence, pride is a hard hard. It's not something so much that I struggle with. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure if I'm given a compliment, you know, I... I think about it, you know, I'm like, oh, that was so nice that I got that compliment. Was it good? Or, what, you know, did I do that well? You know, mm. um, but thankfully, that's not a total struggle for me. That's good, because that, that's a lot of, uh, from what I've seen, it's it's a lot of issues that uh, theater people or actors deal with, <laughs> have a problem with pride, and yeah. they're very prideful about their work, but they, and they forget that, oh, I'm just a person sometimes. Yeah, I mean, honestly, most of the time I'm more... I'm more amazed and astounded by what other people are doing. And mm. I think, wow, they're so gifted at their, their craft. You know, they're so gifted with the camera. They're so gifted with their acting, with hair and makeup, with whatever. And, and that's the thing that I'm like, wow, they must, they must be really proud of their work. <laughs> so uh, thinking on that line, I guess, did you ever have to deal with envy or jealousy? And <laughs> Yes, 100% yes. I, um... Yeah, I mean, I, I see other people getting work that I submitted for, and that's always hard. I mean, this job is, this industry is rejection. Yes. And learning how to take it. And, and um, stride. Yes. I don't, I don't struggle too much with dealing with that rejection, but sometimes if it's a job that I really, really wanted to do, I'm like, mm, that's too bad. But I always tell myself, you know, there, there's a reason why I didn't get that one, and that's okay. And sometimes you just have to put it on the cross. You do. You absolutely do. And that's one of, if I could give any advice to anybody, it would be to put your burdens on the cross. Mm -hmm. And it, it's gone. Because it's not, it's, yeah. you're not supposed to worry about the past. You're not mm -hmm. supposed to worry about the future. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to worry about, you know, God will give you the tools for today. Yeah, yeah. And God is going to support you throughout your life. And your plan is not his plan. Yeah. And that's the one of the, that's the thing that keeps my, myself grounded is, is whenever someone says, no, I can't do that show or no, I'm not looking for a musician right now or, you know, that, <laughs> I'm not, I don't, I want to play by myself yeah. for this time. Yeah. I, I just got to realize that's okay. Yeah. And it is okay. It is okay. I remember early on when my two older ones were, were very young, I remember being very envious of <clears throat> other women, especially that were advancing in their careers without children. And I remember, mm -hmm. I remember going to my priest at church and, and commenting about this and how I was str really struggling with it, with the envy and thinking like, did I have children too young? Like I didn't mm. get to my like where I want to be in my career. And he gave me such, such a good insight. And he said, yeah, but you know, when you're 60 years old, you're going to be surrounded with people that love you you're going to be surrounded with children mm -hmm. grandchildren you know like a full family and at that point in your life that's all that'll matter was that ever an issue for you uh going because there, there's a, a really big uh debate culturally over whether I, family or career first mm -hmm. was that ever an issue for you or it's always just been family so it's always been family uh, yeah yeah and it, it might not be that way for everyone and that that's okay i mean mm -hmm. i think it's important to know <laughs> before you have children right that that's what you want because mm -hmm. it is your life it is your life and i'm not saying that in a negative way but i mean my day is is children um ultimately even though i have other work and i do other things but i'm i'm here to be their mother mm -hmm. and the best i can be so what is one thing that you know now that <laughs> you wish you could have told 
little Leslie Tally? <laughs> hmm. Don't don't sweat the small stuff, <laughs> and mm. um, you know, n- getting caught up in the worry of it all, and worry in terms of if I'm doing a good job, you know, worry if I mess up. Like, don't worry about that. I I get so caught up in like having to be perfect every time, even for a rehearsal, mm-hmm. and I don't like that about myself. Um, and I've gotten better over the years in like emotionally, you know, dealing with that. Um, but yeah, I would definitely give myself the advice that like, will this matter when I'm 90? Will this right. matter when I'm like in the kingdom? <laughs> no, it will not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are you one to stay up and late up at night and then, uh, all the memories of all yeah. awkward things <laughs> yes. just play in your head? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'll wake up at three o'clock in the morning and be like, why did I say that? (laughs) That is literally the reason why I can't go to bed. I'm thinking of all of these old memories from like 10, you know, five, 10 years ago. And I'm just like, why did I do that? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, no one remembers. No (laughs) No one cares. That is one thing that that, uh, is the best thing about the human the humanity is that no one remembers your awkward things unless it particularly affected them mm-hmm. um what, what was what was awkward for you was literally most of the time only awkward for you unless it was like a big scene mm-hmm. yeah and people don't often forget what you or people often forget what you say to them they mm-hmm. won't forget however what you do to them mm-hmm. and that so if you say something weird they're probably not gonna remember that the next <laughs> day but yeah. um I you mean, know. and we're all we're all human. Like all we human. all have been there, where we awkwardly wave to someone who isn't actually waving at you. Yes. <laughs> we've all been in those shoes. <laughs> so, um, being a Christian, and throughout all of your career with with dealing with different Christian projects, uh, what do you, what is worship to you? Mm. Well. I think to me, it's more of um, solitude, uh, sitting in reverence and um, controlling my thoughts to be only on Christ. That is rever- That is that is worship to me. Um, I know some people that's loud and with their bodies and mm-hmm. with singing, but for me, it's it's sitting in silence and just having no other distraction. So uh, a lot of things changed during 2020. Mm-hmm. How did you adapt to uh, COVID theater life? Did you, uh, were you panicking? Did you have anything to fall back on? Mm-hmm. Uh, how did you deal with that scenario? Well, I remember the day that we found out we were, my children were getting pulled out of school. I think it was their last day was March 12th of 2020. Um, I remember the thought, Oh no, my husband at the time was working in theater and I thought, oh no, we're we're doomed. Like mm-hmm. no one will be going to see productions. Like what if this goes on for months? Um and it was panic. But then I will tell you, I mean I know we were talking about this earlier, but um you know, times in your life when you struggle financially or the money is just not coming in, God provides like that was so evident during that time and we had just had a new baby like my mm. our youngest was only two weeks old and then we had the first lockdown and it was for me my concern was more on safety rather than finances um i didn't i didn't worry so much about where that when the job was going to come in the next job was going to come in or when i would do theater again although you know of course that's my love and everything but my concern was more on how do i keep my family safe how do i protect everybody um Will we eat? Yes, mm-hmm. we will eat. You know, God provides. He always provides. And, you know, and I think during that time, it was kind of beautiful for me that I could enjoy that time with just our new baby and yeah. having our two older ones and just having family time. It was, it was, it had, 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 it had its struggles, of course, um, significant struggles, but then it, it had the, the, the beautiful things far outweighed. Yeah, there, there's a lot of good things that came out of the shutdown and a lot of lot of bad things that came out of the shutdown mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, how was the transition back, going back into doing theater? Did you guys have to do, like, the, the face shields? Mm-hmm. Or, because uh, you can't do masks and acting. Yeah. Um, 
Well, getting back onto set was was tricky because you know for film, like you got to be there. You got to be there, and so early on, I was getting offers to do things. Yeah, and and so I would go through and I'd ask the director beforehand, and I would say, okay, what what precautions are you taking? Because this was before like. COVID compliance officers were on set. Like now when oh, I go to a set, yeah. there's always a COVID compliance officer and on most sets um, or there's required testing beforehand. So I'm tested all the time, all the time I'm getting COVID tests. Um, but at that time early on, you know, a few months into it, it was like, okay, how many people will be there? How far away will we be from one another? Um, you know, and I had to ask those questions and I had mm. to turn down several jobs because some of them were like, you know, 12 actors sitting in a circle talking. That was the scene. And I was like, nope, not going to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm nervous about that. Um, But yeah, uh, if it was just another actor and we we would keep our masks on and then time for shooting, we'd take it off and we'd try to keep it, like try to shoot for like five minutes and then go off and wear a mask. Like it was definitely different and weird, Um, but we made it work. That's good. Um. What is, uh, throughout all of your career, what is one mistake that you see actors, actresses constantly, (laughs) or directors constantly make? Hmm. Not connecting enough with one another. Hmm. As an actor, (coughs) excuse me. As an actor, I need connection. I need to be, not necessarily be affirmed in what I'm doing, but I just want to know that like, that was good or that was okay or what you're doing, you're on the right track, you're getting Mm -hmm. there or you need to do more of this because I want to know so I can be like, I want to give exactly what you want or like, you know, improve what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Um, And as as a director, I like to do the same thing. You know, if someone did one little thing that was on the right track, I want to point that out because I'm like, you run with that now. Like you take that and you make it even bigger or you take that and you make other choices with that. Um, so, yeah, connecting. And and I think that that doesn't happen often enough. And I think it's probably, especially in the film world, it's probably because everything just feels so rushed. Yeah. <laughs> there's not it, enough time. There's not enough time to sit down and say, hey, you did a really good job on that one. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, is, and there's something also to say connecting um, with with your coworkers too. Yeah, communication uh, for sure. For sure, because if there's not chemistry between you two, or there's bad chemistry between mm-hmm. actors, it's it's a very good actor could get away with it, but yeah. it, it's gonna show more often than not because mm-hmm. <laughs> subconscious emotions are almost impossible to hide. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's always and we were we were kind of talking about it earlier about uh, when stuff goes wrong, but um, it takes a lot to sell a performance, mm-hmm. and connecting helps. Yeah, sure. absolutely. I mean, I was just on set yesterday, and um, I met the the guy that played my husband, and I we had to like stand there and be like we were, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, affectionate with one another, and. And and I was like, I, hi, I just met you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but we we spoke for a little while beforehand, and that always helps break the ice. But yeah, you have to you have to have some kind of communication for sure. Well, Leslie, this has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, if you want to find Leslie, you can find her at her website, Leslie. That's L E S L I E A N N E T A L L E Y. Yes. At Wix dot com. Yep. And you can find her in her upcoming project. Mm-hmm. It's called the Pony Card Adventure. Yes, and you one can, of them. <laughs> one of them. Uh, what other stuff have you worked on that people could find you at, like other feature films? Um, where you'd find me? Um, I'm trying to think of everything. <laughs> everything I've done. <laughs> you can find her on DVD at uh, for Science Sounds <laughs> for Science Sounds Ruth for a fact. Um, you can find me on IMDb, and um. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that is and you can find, find all my yeah. work there. Yep. Oh, there you go. Uh, with that said, this has been Corey Rosen with the Story Podcast. Please do like and follow if you like our content. You, we, can, we can follow us on Spotify. Just search the story Corey Rosen, C-O-R-Y-R-O-S-E-N. Follow us on Facebook, and you can get all of our updates there. And with that said, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye. Bye.